Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at finding the roots of complex numbers and um, we need a uh, result uh, to help us to find roots of complex numbers and basically it is de Marwa's theorem and uh, basically de Marwa's theorem just says that if I had a complex number z, when I can write it in polar form r cis theta, and I raise this to the power n, so if I raise this complex number to the power n I'd have r cis theta all to the power n then, okay, I need to raise r to the power n, that's all right, but uh, what happens now is that I can bring the n, the power, down onto the argument, so I get cis n theta, and this is a really amazing theorem. Um, there's a quick proof of this uh, using um, Euler's result. Okay, a quick proof, um, you know, if I let z equal r e to the i theta, Okay, this is Euler's result, which you might remember is e to the i theta is cos or cis theta. And I can, uh, so therefore, if I write raise z to the power n, I'll end up getting r e to the i theta to the power n, and that's just equal to r to the n, e to the i n theta, which is, you can see here, just r to the n, and this is cis n theta. Okay. That's just a quick proof. I mean, you can actually prove it in lots of ways, uh, induction and other techniques. Okay, let's have a look at a, an application of this. Okay, here we have a complex number 2 plus 2 root 3i, and I'm going to need to take the fourth roots, or the fourth root of 2 plus 2 root 3i. There are going to be four uh, roots of this. Now, the first thing I need to do is uh, rewrite the complex number in polar form. So how do I do that? Well, I need to get the modulus, which is or R here, and I need to get the angle here, theta. Okay, so let's have a quick look. How do we actually do that? Well, first up, uh, let's have a look. What is R? Well, R is the, just from Pythagoras, the square root of 2 squared plus 2 root 3 all squared. So um, hopefully we can see that R is actually equal to the square root of uh, 2 squared plus 2 root 3 all square, which is the square root of 16, which is equal to 4. So we know r, the, uh, the length, uh, or the modulus of the complex number, is actually 4. How about theta? Well, theta is equal to r the z, obviously, and it's actually tan inverse of y on x, if it's in the x plus i y form, which is now 2 root 3 on 2, which is equal to uh, tan inverse of root 3, which is equal to what a pi on 60 degrees pi on 3. Okay, so the first thing we'd have to do is rewrite um, z in polar form for cis. Uh, the principal argument now is pi on 3. Now, the next little bit is uh, an interesting idea, and it's based on the ambiguity of a complex number. Now, I always like to think of it like um, a multi story car park, and, uh, or if you can, you can think of it in terms of layers, if you like. So that uh, if I add a 2k pi on the end here, uh, and this is what we do, we add a 2k pi onto the argument. Now, uh, this is obviously going to be the same complex number, because I'm going around, what's happening is, I'll go around, say, I keep going around once, okay, I've added 2k, just 2 pi, and I can, can continue on going up and down. I can subtract 2 pi off it as well. Uh, so k is any uh, real number. We normally let k equal, uh, well, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. and up to n minus 1, 4 distinct. So we normally would say that a k is equal to, in this case, 0. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, this. Um, okay. Um, okay. K is equal to 0, in this case 1, 2, 3, up to n minus 1, because we are going to take the fourth roots of this number, so we need the first distinct ones. Now, we could actually pick any values of k in a sequence, okay, and we can we will basically pick up these particular roots. Okay, so what what do we do next? Okay, well, we say, okay, that, uh, let's have a look, we say, okay, z to the fourth equals 2, but we would normally write this as, okay, 4 cis, okay, pi on 3 plus 2k pi, okay. Okay, so that's the first thing, and then we just take the fourth roots of both sides. So z, therefore z, 
would equal everything to raise to the power one quarter, or a fourth, taking the fourth root of everything. So I'd get four to the power one quarter, which is actually root two. Then I'd get cis pi on three plus two k pi to the power of quarter, but I'm going to use de Marwa's theorem and just write as cis. Now I'll bring the quarter down. One quarter pi on three plus two k pi. And I'm going to substitute in k is equal to zero, one, two, and three. So let's have a look. If k is equal to zero, uh, let's just call this the first root. Z1 is equal to, uh, this call four to the power one quarter root two, so it's just going to be root two cis, now k is zero, so it's just like pi on pi on 12. Okay, there we are, pi on 12. If k is equal to one, I get, say, z2, the second root, and I get root two, okay, uh, now I'm now adding uh, two pi, so I end up getting, what's that, uh, six, uh, six, seven pi on 12. Okay, let's have a look, k is equal to uh, two, so that's uh, z, let's call this z3. Okay, the, the third root, uh, root two, cis, now k is three, 12, and if I let k equal uh, three, I'll end up getting uh, Z4, okay, Z4 equals uh, what, root 2 cis, uh, I think it's 19 pi on 12. Okay, so here we have the four, well, roots of this particular complex number. Now, where are they? Well, what interesting, this is quite an interesting aspect of this when I take the roots of complex numbers. They, they get sprayed around, you know, equally spaced, around a, a circle. Now, the circle has a radius, you can see here, of root 2. So I'm just going to just try and draw a circle roughly of root 2. Let's draw a circle of roughly root 2 here. Let's just, just draw a rough one. Now, where are these roots? Well, Z1 is cis, root 2, cis pi and 12. So it has an argument of pi and 12. So let's actually just try and draw it roughly. So let's put on here, there's z1. Now where, okay, that's the first root. z2, uh, 7 pi. So it's, uh, okay, basically up here. Okay, here is uh, z2. How about z3? z3 is 13. Okay. Okay, here we have uh, uh, z3, z3 over there. And z4 is down here. Okay. Oops, right in the middle of this, <laughs> Z4. Okay, all right, so you can see here, they have, um, the roots are now evenly spaced uh, uh, around a, a circle of radius um, root 2 in this case. Now, the size of the circle will depend on the root uh, of the particular complex number, etc., and uh, the actual spacing will also uh, depend on what root number we have there. But basically, the trick is uh, to add in the 2k pi into the argument, and then basically divide this argument by the power and then substitute in k is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. So basically we are substituting in k is equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3, four distinct values. Now, uh, it, it wouldn't matter if I went uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you'd see you'd land on these roots in a circular fashion. Okay, so you'd land back on top of these ones. So for the unique ones, we always go k is equal to zero up to n minus one. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Uh, so for